beautiful people welcome to my channel thank you for coming and first of all do you have that one color you don't like but then you wear it then it you know it it gives you justice that's me in black like black just makes your melanin pop so I'm happy May is mental health awareness month and I think it's so important for us to explore conversations around mental health. I'm not a psychologist and I'm speaking from my own personal experience and perspective as a young black Zambian girl. Girl, woman, correction, woman. <laughs> um, so that's the perspective I'm coming from. For this episode, I will talk about self-harming and for so long, I looked at self-harming as this, you know, this shameful notion that people should not openly talk about. And then I realized the danger that comes with not talking about it because then behaviors or patterns of coping, which, you know, are under the umbrella of self-harming could change and someone could um, move from one particular style of self-harming to the next there are different types of self-harming and i will mention a few that i know of so there's cutting cutting is the most common um, notion of self-harm when people see someone cutting their first notion is oh my god yes this person is harming themselves this person does not you know like themselves like already people come up with the like notions around that particular behavior but there are things as falling and you know banging your head towards the wall or towards the floor um and people sometimes might not notice that that's actually self-harming there's also involving yourself in very toxic relationships which for some people it's just like ah yeah she just she just does not listen you know, she just, that's how she is. There are also times when people involve themselves in relationships that affirm their notion of I am not good enough and I am not deserving. Those are forms of self-harming that people, you know, never really notice because it just, you know, falls under a certain category. Oh, she just likes people who are like that. And how do I know these things? It's because I have experienced it. And when it was happening, I did not look at it as I am self-harming. But I later realized that it was a pattern I was building for myself. If there's one thing that people will say when it comes to self-harming is drama, seeking attention, drama, that, that, that would be you. That, 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 that becomes your nickname. Now it wasn't just self-harm. So in its bubble of self-harm, there was shame that came with it. I used to experience a lot of night terrors. I could not just get through a night without a night terror. So what can I do that would still be very private, but help me cope with the pain, help me cope with the anger, and to help me sleep through that, I would cut myself, and because of that pain, sometimes while I'm sleeping, I would hold onto my wrist that had the cuts and feel it and for some weird reason fell asleep. And then friends noticed it. So now it's like, oh my God. Wow. Wow. These people are seeing exactly what I am doing. And that carried its own type of shame. And mind you, all these decisions leading to this point were not, were not like, oh, I sat with myself and I was like, listen, so um, throwing yourself did not work. So now let's, let's cut ourselves. And so I did not have that discussion. Trust me, even my ancestors had no idea. We, they were blindsided as well. It was just a very impulsive um, reaction to the anger that was building up. 
So the cycle of self-harm continued and I realized that there was something deeper that was going on and I did seek help and went for therapy. And of course, things, you know, started aligning for myself and for my health. Now, why do people self-harm? People self-harm as a way of punishment. Some carry hurt and shame and guilt on behalf of other people that have actually caused that hurt. And since they cannot show their anger or punish the person, they punish themselves. Other people self-harm as a way of crying for help because there's just so much distress going on that they do not know how to handle that. So for most people, it's actually a coping mechanism. And people might ask, like, why is it just a coping mechanism? That sounds terrible, but that's how they cope with the distress of life. Other self-harming can be a sign of suicidal thoughts. It's not that they don't trust you enough to tell you. It's the fact that they don't want to burden you and they had to do it. They had to take matters in their own hands. So you being like, what were you thinking? Don't you know that we love you? Well, I know you love me. That's why I don't want to hurt you. And I know that you love me. That's why I think it's better that I deal with this. Because of the shame associated to self-harm, I am trying to hide that shame. I don't want you looking at me with eyes that say shame. You know? Like, I, I, I don't want that. We always want to make it better for the people that we love. We don't want them to hurt. We don't want them to, you know, be going through what they're going through. And our initial instinct is, how do I fix this? How do I make it better? But it's important to realize that it is not your responsibility to carry them through that pain. For their healing to be sustainable, they have to go through that process of healing, through the pain, through the realization, through the, okay, what steps am I taking next? What tools do I use to change my coping mechanisms? Encourage them to seek help encourage them to talk to professionals to counselors and for others who are religious help them talk to people they trust if they're christian um faith for me was very important it 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 helped me get through certain dark times and if it wasn't for my faith and therapy and we don't know where we would be right now Dear someone who is self-harming, I know the dark feels safer and the better place to let it out. I know light makes you feel exposed and ashamed. I know your heart is heavy. I just want you to know you are seen, you are loved, you are strong. Changing coping ways is scary, but they will bring you joy, I promise. It might take a lot of pain to relearn, but when all is done, you will get to meet someone, someone who is patiently waiting to meet you. That someone is you. It's Mental Health Awareness Month, and I hope we show each other kindness and just reach out to our friends. Um, and when we need help, just reach out to the people that love you because they have your back. So until next time, thank you, thank you for coming. Please take care of yourself.